Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. We're here in the digital barn, here with Mark Spencer. And he's gonna show us some really cool stuff with color palettes in motion. Yes, yes. It, we're talking about motion, but really we're talking about motion graphics in general, or even graphics in general. When you're working on a piece for a corporate client, you usually need to make sure that your colors are consistent with their guidelines. Sure. So most companies have something called a style guide right. that you can find. So I wanna talk about how you make sure that you're consistent with those colors. So I have example, an example here of a style guide from Animal Planet where they published the colors that you wanna use for them. Um, th this is not that great a style guide only because it shows swatches of colors but doesn't give you the actual values. So I'll give you another example of a, of a different um, this is a different Animal Planet style guide that I located that shows you colors, but it also shows you the CMYK and the Panatone values, neither of which are useful for us. RGB. Right. And it's funny because Animal Planet is a, is a television show, but they're producing these uh, style guides with uh, print colors, CMYK. Right. So you can still sample the colors. If it's all you got, you can do it. But right. it's better if you actually have the RGB or the hex values if you're you know, doing web stuff. So here's another example. This is Walmart's style guide. And you can see in these paint cans, they list the CMYK values, the RGB values, and the hex values, and the Panatone values. Everything. So that's really the best kind of thing. Right. So um, one other thing I'm gonna show you is there's a site called brandcolors.net. So if you're not, you don't have access to the style guide, usually you know, the company will give you access, but maybe you're doing a spec piece or something. This, this site called brandcolors.net shows you uh, the official colors of hundreds of different companies in here, which is kind of neat. And they're supposed to be their official. I mean, I would try to find the ones for sure, right. but this is kind of a neat thing. And you can go and find a company here and you can download uh, these swatches or just take a picture of them and put them into your application, which in our case is motion. So what I'm gonna do in motion here is a couple of things uh, to show you how to get these into the OS 10 color picker. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a shape and the only reason I'm adding a shape is it allows me to bring up the color picker by clicking on the color swatch in the heads up display. And I'm also gonna make this color picker bigger to work with it. Now, in the past, you may have seen, I've done, I've talked before about using these colors down here. You can drag this. Little registers. Yeah, you can drag this tray open and you have access to more. There you go. Yeah, so you can add more colors in here. Uh, but I found a better way, and it's not just me who found this. This is uh, thanks to one of our um, folks who wrote in and talked about this. So here's one thing I would do. Uh, here's where we're gonna go. I I'm gonna go to the RGB sliders for a moment, and the reason I'm going there, there's a gear that allows you to check, that allows you to select the color space to work in when you're working in the color picker. Mm -hmm. And you can see there's a lot, but frequently it defaults to the generic uh, one, and I wanna make sure it's set to sRGB, which is really best for video, the web. Yeah. For video for the web. So I'm pretty focused on video for the web, not for broadcast here. Right. I'm, I'm like, we're gonna display on YouTube or Vimeo or in their, in their web page. Okay. That's what I'm interested in. So that's the first thing that's at the color space. Then I'm gonna jump over to this thing called the image palette. And this is really cool. So I took some pictures of these different uh, a color screenshot swatch, the of these swatches, yeah. So if I click this gear, right now there's nothing in this pop-up menu except for the spectrum. But if you click the gear and choose new from file, and if you navigate to the, I have some brand colors here, and for instance, I've got my Animal Planet colors. So if I open that, it drops that file right in here. Uh, okay. That is pretty cool. Isn't that great? Yeah. So now I've got these colors. So now if I'm going to change this, you know, whatever I have here, it's just a stupid little rectangle. Let me make it a little bigger. But <laughs> if I, I can make it any of these colors by clicking on the eyedropper and then sampling those. So as I'm building graphics, I can make them match perfectly to these color swatches. Dude, that is so awesome. <laughs> I can't tell you. That is so cool. That is phenomenal. So I love that. It, it's not necessarily perfectly accurate because you're sampling this. From, there could be some slight variations. Right. So I want to show you one other option, but I love this right here. And you can see it says Animal Planet Colors, and now it's in here, and you can share it. You know, anybody can drop it in there. So here's one other option. I'm going to go back to this swatch here, which are palettes of color. And these are the default ones that are built in here, but you can add your own custom palette. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do is go down here, to the, just go to the gear and choose new. And then you have to go to the gear again and choose rename. It's a little uh, kludgy here, but I'll, I'll call this, um, I'm gonna call this Marvel. And I don't mean Marvel Comics. It's a different, it's a different uh, company Marvel, but I have their colors here in my, uh, in motion. 
So I've just brought them in that I took off of uh, off their site. So what I can do here is I'm going to take the one in there out by clicking the minus, but now I can start to sample these. And as I sample them, I can drag them in here and I can rename them. You just hit the return key. Give them their names. Yeah, you can give them their names. So I'll just call this light. Um, and you can go through and select each of these. I'll just select a couple here to, to give an example of it and then drag this in and rename each of these things. Yeah, do a pink next. I think they get the picture. <laughs> okay, well then I think they get the picture, yeah. but I can. what I can show you is I can also load in, I've already, um, I've already made one that I can add in here. Oh, so you can save those. Yeah, you can, sa you can save them. Wow. So I've got, um, and I'll, I'll show you exactly where these get stored. So you can send them. So here I loaded my own. I've already built them all out. Wow. Okay, so I went ahead and did that. So here's where they live. This is a cool thing. This is where they live. If you go to um, the Go menu, hold down the Option key so the library shows up, okay? And then you go to Colors. There is where the .clr uh, files CLR, are stored. For color. Yes, yeah, color. For color, right. right. Now you can't just drop another one in here, but right. you can take this and send it to anybody. And they drop it in the same place. No, it won't work. What they do, <laughs> it won't. They have to go in here and choose open uh, and then select it. Got it. Okay, so the, you don't just drop in that folder, but that's where it lives so you can send it to somebody else. Okay. So if you're in a team of people, you can build up this uh, sp specific, unique color palette that you can then share with everybody so they're all working with the exact same color palette. I love it. Or you can just take a picture and put it in there. So a couple of ideas. The, the thing I like about this one, just to, to be a little, one more thing here is if I want to use these values, so they give us the hex values, rather than clicking on the swatch, what I can do is go back to the RGB sliders and down here there's a hex number. So I can type in the hex number here. Let's just do one really quickly to show you how this works. So I'll do the dark purple, which is um, 592, 592DEA. Okay, and the swatch turns purple. Then I go back over here to these and drag this in here. Okay, so what that means is I can either type in the RGB values or the hex values depending on what they've given me. So I'm really making sure I'm selecting the exact value and then putting it in there rather than just counting on the eyedropper to, to sample right. something. Okay, so a couple ideas on how to uh, get the full list of corporate colors so when you're building motion graphics, they are gonna be consistent and they're not gonna be rejected. That's a fantastic tip. Uh, I think it's fantastic. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, I'm, always, I'm always surprised at what you show. <laughs> okay. All right, it's fantastic. So um, check out our website, rippletrain.com, for all of Mark's uh, motion tutorials. By the way, you want to check out our new website. It's completely redesigned, yes. really easy it's to awesome. find stuff. Uh, just check it out. Check us out on Facebook, all the usual social media gathering places. And we want to thank you for consistently watching us each week. We'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode in MacBreak Studio. Thanks for watching.